I am a huge gadget nerd, and being that Guild Wars 2 is a PC game, that carries into how I play it. Really, I'm just too picky for my own good. But the end result is that I've tried a bunch of different peripherals over the years, and I think I have a pretty good opinion on them now. So I'm here today to show you the light and introduce you to our lord and savior, the MMO mouse. Now, these come in a bunch of different shapes and forms, but what I'm really talking about are mice that have a 12-key numpad on the side of them. If you've never used one before, these will change the way you play Guild Wars 2. Let me explain what I mean, and I'll also show you a bunch of different options for different mice out there. As you know, Guild Wars 2 presents you with at least 10 skills at any given time. Plus, we have dodge, special action key, jump, your profession skills, mounts, commander markers. It's a lot. The problem is, most people use WASD to move, which keeps your left hand at the left side of the keyboard for movement keys. When you go to fire off any skills, you need to take your hand off the movement keys to activate your skills, which by default are bound to your number keys. So the first issue is you can't easily move your character while firing off skills. The second issue is for any keys out of reach of your left hand, you either need to take your hand off the WASD position or bring your right hand all the way over from your mouse to your keyboard. When you're trying to act quickly in the middle of combat, you are almost guaranteed to get a keystroke wrong once in a while. And now you have to jump back and forth between keyboard and mouse if you need to move your camera or use any ground targets. A lot of players get around this by binding their skills to nearby keys to ease the pain here, but binding 10 or more numeric keys to arbitrary letters and modifiers absolutely does not work for my brain. And plus, it still means taking your fingers off the movement keys in order to activate skills. So this is why I use an MMO mouse. The keys on the side are essentially just mapped to keystrokes. This means I can simultaneously steer my camera, move my character in any direction, jump, dodge, and fire off skills, all with an immediate button press, and I never have to move or reset my hand position. I also happen to use action camera, which I think lends itself well to this control scheme. And the whole thing results in a sort of action RPG experience that just feels really fluid and natural. If you use a lot of ground targeting or range skills, you probably don't like action camera as much, but an MMO mouse still makes traditional targeting extremely smooth. If you use the fast or instant settings for your ground targeting mode, you can very quickly aim and fire off these skills with just a single click using only your mouse. You can also combine them with modifier keys for your profession skills, mounts, commander markers, and pretty much whatever else you need. I use shift for my profession skills, so for example my F1 is actually shift plus one, but of course you can make any combo you want. All right, now you've seen how this works and why I am obsessed with this control scheme. Now let me show you some of the different options that are out on the market so you can pick the right mouse for you. This is not a tech review channel, but I bought these specifically for Guild Wars 2, so I think it'll still be helpful. Unfortunately, I've learned there is kind of a limited selection on these mice out there, but I've tried a bunch of them and I'll go over each one's strengths and weaknesses so you can pick the one that's best for you. My current go-to is the Steel Series Aero X9. It's extremely lightweight, which makes it easy to grab and move around without fatiguing your hands after long periods of time. It can also be paired over Bluetooth, which makes it great for use with a laptop, or with the included USB-C wireless dongle. I like that it's USB-C since that makes it more compatible with a lot of modern laptops, which sometimes don't have full-size USB-A ports anymore. But it also includes a small weighted dock for the dongle, along with a high quality braided USB-A to C cable, so you can position the dock where you want it. You can also unplug this cable from the dongle and plug it in directly to the mouse, which both charges it and provides a wired connection. This mouse is, however, designed for big hands. The numpad is mounted pretty far forward, so it works best for those who use a palm grip. I use a claw grip, but my hands are just big enough to fit with it. Also, the numpad on the side is a little hard to press, and combined with a light weight, it can sometimes cause you to jitter the mouse a little while activating skills or adjust your grip to compensate for it. It's not perfect, but it's the best I've found so far. The Steel Series software is a little bloated, but otherwise it's fairly clean and professional and well laid out. Next up for me is the Razer Naga, which comes in a few different versions. I have the Naga Trinity, which lets you swap out the sides for other button configurations. The Naga Pro also has this feature and can also be used wirelessly. The Naga X is a basic wired version and it's frequently on sale if you want a high quality budget option. The Naga has the nicest feeling side switches out there. They feel like baby mechanical keyboard switches. They're nice and clicky and they're easy to press without being squishy. They're even backlit. Razer software isn't bad either. I don't find it super intuitive, but yeah, it's not bad. I also think Razer's sensor is the best, and I generally like the feel of Razer's acceleration and deceleration tuning. The only reason the Razer isn't my top pick is because of some very specific design decisions. It is very chonky, and it feels good in the hand at first, but the grip along the right side is actually pretty slippery, and because those side buttons are concave and very easy to press, you kind of have to be careful when you pick it up and adjust it in effort to not accidentally activate a side button. This is made worse by the fact that it's so heavy. 
If the shape were tweaked or the weight reduced, it wouldn't be so bad. And I made mine a bit better by adding some grip tape to the side and some of the buttons that my thumb rests near, but it still does bother the side of my hand after extended use. Next up is the Corsair Scimitar Pro. This one has a pretty nice shape and the position of the numpad is adjustable so it will fit with basically any hand size. It also has a mix of textured and flat keys so you can more easily tell where your thumb is without looking. It's pretty light but it's also not wireless if that matters to you. However, I found the keypad to be really cheap and mushy feeling. This might sound like I'm just nitpicking at this point, but it was so bad that the number four key kind of flickered when you pressed it and I had to return it, which is why it's the only one I don't have live video of here. Also, the Corsair IQ software is abysmal. It's clunky, ugly, nothing is where you expect it. It's just awful. Honestly, if I had exchanged my mouse for one that had a good numpad, I would probably still be using it today, but the IQ software completely ruined it for me. But quality control issues aside, if you can get past the software, it's actually a pretty decent mouse. Now on the cheaper end is actually the first MMO mouse I tried, which is one that a friend gave to me, and that's the Red Dragon M908. This is actually the cheapest on the list, but I have to say it's not bad. It has a nice textured finish, the shape makes sense, and the side keys all have this sort of positive negative tilt to them to give your thumb some help positioning. The software is very basic and it's a bit ugly, but it has what you need and it's one of the few mice that will write your configs to the onboard memory on the mouse. So you actually don't need to have their software up and running all the time just to make your LEDs the right color. I wish more manufacturers would do this. Honestly, this mouse is insanely good bang for your buck. The side key switches aren't nearly as nice as the Razer, but they get the job done. Unfortunately, it's fuck ugly, but if you can get past that or if you happen to like the look, no judgment. It's a really great way to give this control scheme a try. I also tried a similar mouse, the Red Dragon M913 Impact Elite. It's only a couple bucks more and it's wireless. It has a good shape, it's not too heavy, and I found the wireless connectivity to be pretty solid. It also includes a nice braided USB A to C charging cable, just like the Steel Series does. However, it wouldn't track on my felt desk mat at all. If you have a normal desk mat or none at all, it'll likely be fine. I also found the side buttons to be a little too hard and clicky. They're just cheap tactile switches and they're very loud and kind of hard to press. The body of the mouse also uses a fair amount of glossy plastic, which gets greasy quick if you're a hand sweater like me, and even the matte sections lack the rough texture of the M908. It's a shame they couldn't otherwise match the quality of the M908, or it would be a pretty solid wireless choice, but some may still like it for a budget option. The last one on the list is kind of an honorable mention, and that's the Logitech G600. It's actually the only one that I haven't personally used, but when I was recording this, one of my friends happened to be over who happens to have this mouse. And that's convenient because it's widely considered to be one of the best options out there. It has a fairly neutral shape, it's not too heavy, and it has an extra function key that basically doubles your number of keybinds. I think it looks a bit basic and not in a good way, and there's no wireless option, but otherwise it's been recommended to me a few times as the best one out there. Considering it's one you can probably pick up at a local electronics store, and it's practically always on sale, I think it's a really solid choice if you want to try this control scheme out. Really, the only reason I haven't picked one up myself is because I kept skipping it over in favor of more interesting designs or mice with more features. I'm sorry, the design of this just bores the hell out of me. If this mouse were a spice, it would be flower. But hey, function is more important than form here. There are a couple of other options out there, but if you ask me, none that tick the right boxes. The remaining options are kind of positioned as MMO mice, but they just have more buttons than a standard mouse. They don't have the actual numpad layout. They still end up with fewer functional buttons or they just look like a mess, so I say skip them personally. So, have you used a control scheme like this? And if so, what do you think? Let me know in the comments what your setup is like. Also, I know this is a bit unorthodox for a channel covering MMO content, but I haven't seen another channel cover something like this, and I think it's really helpful for any MMO player, and especially for Guild Wars 2. So let me know if you like this video, because if there's enough interest, I can do another one for keyboards, gaming headsets, monitors, whatever. Either way, thanks for watching.